Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel Must Love Labs. My name is Alan. On this channel we talk about tips and tools for how to raise, breed, and sell Labrador Retrievers as quality family pets. So if you're new here, you might consider subscribing. In today's video, we're going to talk about how to breed dogs. I've got five great tips for beginners. Let's get to the content. Okay, tip number one, start small. Now, I've talked about this in previous videos, uh, the concept of starting small. Uh, and basically we're talking about starting out with one or two dogs. Uh, I recommend to everybody you start out with one female and have a litter of puppies and see how that goes. Um, some people wanna get a male and a female uh, to start out with and, and that's fine. Um, if you have a choice, I'd suggest that you stagger them out a year, get the female first and uh, let her get about a year old and then get the male. And, and we're talking about buying puppies here, by the way. So this, this is based on buying puppies. That's what I do here at Must Love Labs. We start out with puppies. And um, so you start out with one female and uh, a year or so later, pick up a male or not. Either way, some people never uh, pick up a stud dog. They always just outsource that. They find a breeder that they're comfortable with. Uh, the main thing is that you don't breed dogs that are related, obviously. Uh, and go through a litter of puppies with one female after your females become mature and, and uh, she's capable of handling puppies intellectually and not just physically. And um, uh, have, her, have a litter of puppies before you uh, decide to bring on more dogs and, and, and jump full bore into breeding. And this will allow you to work out your process and, and learn uh, the new people mistakes that everybody makes and to get comfortable with what's going on. Get your infrastructure straightened out uh, and just get used to the process with, with one dog. And uh, the, one of the biggest mistakes that people make with animals is they get too many too fast. And then they get into trouble because they really don't know what they're doing yet. They haven't worked their way through the learning curve. Uh, so uh, Dave Ramsey talks about keeping your mistakes small and non-fatal. Uh, there's no way to become successful at anything without making mistakes. You can't do it, it's part of the process. The trick is to keep your mistakes small and non-fatal so they don't wipe you out when they happen. And you do that by starting small. Hey folks, if you're getting value from this video, do me a favor and hit that like button. It sure does help out quite a bit. And thanks in advance for doing that. Okay, let's talk about tip number two. Make sure you have the space. And what are we talking about with that? Well. Uh, different breeds of dogs require different amounts of space. I work with Labradors. Somebody else might be working with uh, smaller dogs, maybe uh, uh, Yorkies or something. And so these different breeds, and if somebody had Mastiffs, I mean, they would be, you know, those are huge dogs. They, they all take up different amounts of space. And in the beginning, uh, for the first three weeks or so, the puppies are real small. You've got them in a nice little pen. Uh, I do a video about a whelping box on a budget that that talks about a, a, an eight panel pen that's just perfect for little puppies. And for the first three weeks or so, that's great. You can do that right in your living room. Uh, I'll, I'll put a card in here that'll take you right to that video if you wanna watch it, by the way. Um, uh, so for the first three weeks or so, they don't take up a whole lot of room. They're in your living room, they're quiet, everything's calm, everything's peaceful. Uh, but at, at about two weeks, their eyes open and this starts to change. Um, about two and a half weeks, coming up on three weeks, um, they're gonna be barking, and they're gonna be yapping, and making some noise, uh, and you're gonna need to start them on puppy mush, and um, we've got a video in our series about that as well, by the way. Um, uh, so their smell is gonna change, because when you put them on puppy mush, their poop changes. They're not on mama's milk completely anymore. So the smell is gonna be different, the noise level is gonna change, um, the dogs are going to be getting bigger. The puppies are going to be growing like a weed. I mean, they, they start taking off. When you start feeding them puppy mush, they, they start going. So after about three weeks, their space requirement is going to change. You can dedicate a bedroom, one of the bedrooms in your house, to puppies. That works out really well. Some people use their garage. Some people convert their garage into a, at least a temporary uh, uh, puppy habitat. Um, Outbuildings work, uh, shed buildings, 
and uh, other types of uh, small buildings outside. Uh, the main thing here, whether if you go into the garage or a shed building or, or like what I do with a, 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 an insulated uh, shop inside my barn, uh, you have to be able to climate control this space, whatever it is. You, you've got to be able to adjust the temperature up or down as needed. Uh, so that's the main thing with that. And you can think about this up front. And um, I've got a video, by the way, um, uh, my kennel tour part two, if you want to go have a look at that. Um, uh, you want to think about space requirements for the puppies, not just when they're born, but when they start getting bigger, louder, smellier, more demanding, uh, depending on the breed that you have. If you're working with small breeds, it's not too much of an issue, but if you've got larger breeds, like my Labradors, for instance, it's a big issue. They're going to outgrow your living room, and you've got to ask yourself how you want to handle that. That's what I mean by uh, making sure that you have the space. All right, moving right along, tip number three, find a good veterinarian to work with. This is super important, and it matters quite a bit. Um, you're going to be going to the vet frequently. You'd be surprised how frequently when you start breeding dogs and raising puppies. Um, just to give you an example with the puppies, um, if you're going to be removing dew claws, that happens in the first five days. That's when their nervous system hasn't developed yet and they won't feel it. Uh, if you want to wait till after that, it's, it's a surgery at that point. You know, good luck. It, it needs to happen in the first five days. So you'll be over at the vet with your puppies for that. Um, worming medicine starts at two weeks. Shot series starts at six weeks. Uh, plus all the health and wellness visits for your regular dogs, for, for your mama dog and maybe your stud dog if you've got a stud. Uh, so you, you want to find a good veterinarian to work with somebody that you're comfortable with and you're happy with their price structure. And um, you wanna find one that's close by. You know, you don't wanna to have to take a big, huge road trip to go to the vet because you're gonna be going over there pretty often. And um, a veterinarian that's got a 24 hour emergency number is really important. Um, all the bad stuff doesn't happen during business hours, people. <laughs> it just doesn't. Uh, you can have a mama dog delivering puppies and run into problems at one o'clock in the morning and you've got to be able to talk to your vet and maybe even go see them. So having a vet that's got a 24 hour emergency number and they respond to it, that's important. Um, you want a vet that understands breeding. Now, obviously all of them have been to school, uh, but some of these vets specialize in breeding dogs. Uh, some of them kind of shy away from dealing with breeders. That's what I've noticed. You want to find a vet that's comfortable with dealing with breeders. Uh, they understand and will do artificial insemination for you. Um, and, and, and they'll work with that process. And there's, there's other forms of insemination too. There's surgical inseminations and whatnot. It depends on the breed that you're working with as to how much uh, you would need them to be involved with that. But you get the point. You want a really good, close by, breeder friendly veterinarian that's got a 24 hour emergency number and they'll work with you. Find a good veterinarian to work with. That's tip number three. Okay, moving right along, here's tip number four. Learn how to wean puppies. You're gonna have to know how to wean puppies, folks. And we've got a video in our series, I'll put a, a card to it and you can go there and, and watch. You're gonna take about two to three weeks and transition these puppies over to dry kibble. That's a process and, and you have to do it. When they leave your care, they need to be on dry kibble. And it, it takes a few weeks to get them there. And like I said, I've, uh, I've got a video in our series. Uh, I'll put a card in here to it. And uh, you can go there and watch that if you want to and learn how to weed pup, wean puppies. Okay, that brings us to tip number five. Uh, learn to socialize puppies well. Now, what, what do I mean by that? Um, you handle, you wanna handle puppies two to three times a day, you know, after their eyes open up and they start moving around and whatnot. Uh, a couple, two, three times a day, you're gonna be in there cleaning out their kennel anyways, their, their living space, whatever, whatever you're, you're using. And, but you wanna handle them. Puppies have a mouthful of teeth, little needles. That's what the creator gives them. And they use that to check out everything. You know, they, they don't have hands and whatever. So they check out everything with their mouth. So they, they put their mouth on everything and they got a mouthful of needles. So that's a recipe for, for a, a hard time. And uh, through repetition, 
you know, they, 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 they put their mouth on you and you gently but firmly take them, take them away, tell them no biting. Remember that term, no biting, over and over and over through repetition. Uh, and you can start to teach your puppies to not be clamping down on people every time somebody picks one up or goes to pet one or play with one. Um, you want to get them um, around other dogs. Hopefully you've got another dog or two around your house. Obviously they're going to be around mama dog and she's going to be uh, working with them as well. You'll see mama dog clamp down on one of, the, one of her puppies and you'll think, oh my gosh, what is she doing? Is she biting that dog? No, she's teaching that dog to not bite so hard. That's what that's about, bite inhibition. You teach them and so does the mama dog. So you want to get them around other dogs if you can. Uh, this is a good thing because when they go to their forever homes, they're probably going to be around other dogs. A lot of people have more than one. Uh, children, your kids, grandkids, neighbor kids, whatever, uh, you want to get your puppies around children and get them used to being around children. Uh, familiar household noises like running the vacuum sweeper, hearing the dishwasher go, you know, playing music in the television. You want to get them used to, to, to what normal life in their forever home is going to be at least get them some exposure. Uh, and this way, they're not freaking out when they get to their forever home, you know, just information overload. Oh my gosh, what's going on? Uh, they're, they're, it won't be the first time they've seen another dog or, or seen a child uh, or, or heard a vacuum sweeper go by. Um, uh, and, and maybe not be biting people quite so much just to check them out and see what they're about. Uh, and this is what we mean by, by socializing puppies. Uh, it's important as a breeder to spend some time socializing your dogs um, and that'll come back to you uh, with good referrals from your customers. They'll be, they'll be happy to tell their friends about what a great dog they have and, and where they got them because people always ask, oh, look at that great dog, where did you get him? Well, uh, if you did a good job, then you'll get a referral at that moment and when one of your best friends gives you a referral, that's a done deal. That's more powerful than any piece of advertising you'll ever buy. Um, so, socialize your puppies. We covered a lot of ground today, and if you've got more questions, we have a series on how to become a dog breeder. I'll put that up in the card right here. You can click on this and go and watch that series. And thanks for stopping in to Must Love Labs. We'll see you in the next video.